Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. This is Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Tim Stenebeck on Bloomberg Radio. Up to now, Carol, the winners when it comes to AI have been clear. When, when talking public companies, at least, you know, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Supermicro Computer, Broadcom, and the like certainly come to mind. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. What's been less clear, though, is something that we ask pretty much everyone we think can answer it, is how AI will change the future of work. It's a big question. And yeah, we know it's supposed to make us all more productive. And I wouldn't mind a little assist on some of the things that we do. But uh, Tim and I are still writing all of these introductions on our own. So isn't helping yeah. yet. So when we make mistakes, like if I, you know, helping you say the, the name Fed. of a, How could if you we say the name of a book incorrectly, for example, that could be my <laughs> fault for writing it improperly. In the, Would AI get it right? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. maybe not. Hey, um, we know that uh, Dan Shapiro spends a lot of time thinking about this. He's chief operating officer over at LinkedIn. Reminder: It is owned by Microsoft. They did buy it a few years ago. He joins us from Mountain View, California. Dan, welcome back. How are you? Great to be here. How are you? We're doing pretty well. Hey, politics is certainly top of mind, front and center for us. Um, So we got to ask you, uh, just because Mm -hmm. we have just learned that J.D. Vance has been picked as uh, the running mate for former President Trump. He announced that just in the last half hour. Um, how, How that's kind of coming into your world, how politics is playing into your world over at LinkedIn right now at all. Are you seeing it on the site? It's traditionally kind of an apolitical place, at least in my experience. But share with us what you're seeing. Well, the focus of LinkedIn is to be a platform for professional conversation, knowledge sharing. And so that's really the place that we focus. And LinkedIn will always really be about economic opportunity and not a place for political discourse. But I do wonder, too, as a chief operating officer, how you are thinking about potentially the impact of the upcoming elections, what it might mean in terms of the economy, the labor market. I mean, that's a really important thing, right? Job postings and the activity on your um, site. So I'm just curious how it at all kind of factors into any of your narratives uh, in your job. Yeah, well, it's no question it's a topic of conversation in the business environment. Where, Where we really try to focus is to make sure that People can come to LinkedIn to, if they're concerned about their jobs or looking for their next job, that they can find that opportunity, that they can learn new skills to prepare for the AI economy, which is probably the most important thing that both our members and our customers are coming to us to talk about. All right. So I'm assuming they're also coming to you to talk a lot about artificial intelligence. So top of mind, top couple of questions that are coming up uh, when it either is your customers or just you're noticing in terms of activity on the site. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing is that the energy shifted. Two years ago, when ChatGPT came about, there was inspiration, there was trepidation. I think most business leaders have shifted into execution. I think it's been pretty come pretty clear that business leaders have decided that the difference between their team performing and not performing over the next year and maybe in the next you know decade is about if they've figured out how to manifest the power of AI. In fact, 80% of business leaders have already made the decision that they need to start adopting AI tools more aggressively. Now, now they're asking questions, well, what does this mean for my team? And it really breaks into three categories. There's roles where they know they need more of that. Those might be technical roles in particular. Uh, there's roles that they wonder if they need fewer of. But but probably the thing that's the most unique about this change is that for the vast majority of companies, a big percentage of their employee base is probably going to need to learn new things. And you know, as much as people are asking the question, is AI going to take my job? The, the question that everyone knows the answer to is that AI is absolutely going to change your job. We predict that about 70% of skills will need to change by 2030. And so there's just a lot of questions that people are working through, whether you're a business leader or you're a professional, about how is it going to change for me and my team? Or what does it mean that I need to prepare for in my career? Hey, um, before we go, I just before we go further, I just want to get an idea and take a step back a little bit, because as, as a reminder, uh, LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft and Microsoft. I think no question people would argue with that Microsoft is one of the leaders when it comes to AI. They've got um, the open AI partnership. Um, they've got Mustafa Suleiman, who's the DeepMind and Inflection co-founder as um, EVP and CEO of Microsoft AI. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Dan, what do you get from Microsoft as the parent company in terms of AI? I think there's two things. I think the the first thing is the world's leading infrastructure. So 
all AI capabilities are about the right infrastructure, the right models, and data that helps make those models smarter. And we've been so thrilled to be able to leverage the Microsoft infrastructure and modeling capabilities to really power a whole new set of features that are showing up for our customers. They could be recruiters or marketers um, and our members, whether they're trying to get content or find a job. And so that infrastructure has really given us the ability to scale up our AI uh, roadmap in a very ambitious way. And the second is just around thought leadership. I mean, we were very lucky to learn about some of the new ChatGPT models about six months before the rest of the world saw them as they mm. were launched. And oh, cool. that allowed us to start to pivot our roadmap and plant a hundred seeds of new product features. And we're really learning in an aggressive way about what works and what's coming and how that means we can deliver more value for our different constituencies. Right, there's two different sides to this, right? What you will see on the platform in terms of jobs and how they are impacted by artificial intelligence, yeah. whether it's you know co-working side by side or just new jobs that pop out or some jobs that ultimately go away, but it's also how you guys use artificial intelligence or whether it's ChatGPT. How are you and how is it going to be changing the LinkedIn platform? Well, I think I sort of have talked about the number one interview question in my mind of 2024 is tell me how you've used AI in your job mm -hmm. or at home. And the reason is because companies recognize, all companies, LinkedIn, the entire ecosystem recognizes that we need teams that are AI capable, that are AI fluent. And so any ability to manifest that knowledge in the way you talk to an employer is going to be a huge deal. Um, in fact, we've seen AI skills on the platform go through an enormous surge over the last 12 months. And it's not just technical roles, you know, marketers, designers, some of the most creative roles are embracing AI because it helps remove some of the drudgery and the administrative tasks that are often get in the way of doing the more creative work. Um, and so we at LinkedIn, we're, we're exploring this across the range of capabilities in our own products within our teams. And I'm just really excited about people being able to focus on the more human parts of the job, the more creative parts of the job. Uh, and it really is going to be an unlock for a wide range of disciplines. How do you use <laughs> AI at work? I use it in a number of ways. Um, I really wish that I could be more places at the same time. I don't know if you've ever felt this in your life. Oh, yeah. But um, sometimes <laughs> there are meetings I can't join, and I can get summaries and transcripts of them to know what I should focus on. On the odd occasion, I join a meeting late, and AI will tell me what I missed. Um, I'm often trying to uh, take customer information and know how our customers feel about our products. And so um, sometimes AI will help me summarize that. Uh, and then at home, uh, you know, sometimes I try to uh, organize family trips or activities, and sometimes AI will give me ideas of how to either, you know, plan for an event or, or do some travel. Uh, do you feel like in five years, AI and the types of jobs we'll be talking about will be dramatically different? I don't know if the titles will be different. I think there are a lot of the titles that people have today will be the same titles they have in the future. But if you look at what people do in those jobs, I think the things that they spend their day doing will change dramatically. Um, there's a lot of repetitive and administrative mm -hmm. tasks in a lot of jobs. A good example, um, we work with recruiters day in and day out. Right. And a lot of time they spend is writing personalized messages to the candidates that they want to have a conversation with. What they really want to be doing is spending time talking to those candidates around their aspirations and their capabilities. Right. But they spend a lot of time in this communication. AI is very good, what we've learned, of writing a personalized outreach message to someone you don't know. Because we right. know the person, we know the job. Right. And so now the recruiter can really, you know, hone yeah. in their skill set around the human part of the job. That makes a lot of sense. All right, Dan Shapiro, thank you so much. Chief Operating Officer at LinkedIn, who's in good company because the Fed Chair Jay Powell, they're actually using ChatGP to ask them, like, what kind of questions could I get at the press conference yeah, after a Fed decision? Better questions from the actual journalists. <laughs> so our job is safe, at least for now. Thanks to Dan Shapiro.